Good morning, church. Why don't you help me out with your hands today like this?
the Lord's name on high. Amen. Woo. Come on, sing it. Rejoice again. Rejoice, church. Do we have a reason to rejoice? Hey, with your hands. Let everything that has breath. Come on, sing it. Hey, let everything that has breath. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let everything. That's right. I'll praise when I'm numbered. Praise when surrounded. Cause praise is the waters that my enemies drown in. Do we believe that? Come on, sing it as long. As long as I'm breathing. Come on, church, 
Come on, church. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Let everything. Let everything. That has breath. That has breath. Praise the Lord. Church, praise him. <laughs> Church, I want to remind you that it's, it's okay to have fun in the presence of God. Okay? It's okay to have fun. Here we're praising, and we have many, many, many reasons to praise him. Is that right? We have many reasons to exalt him. Is that right? We have many reasons to worship him. Is that right? Come on, church. Help me out with your hands. Two, three, four. a place to hide this weary soul, this bag of bones. I try with all my might, but I just can't win the fight. I'm slowly drifting, a vagabond. Hear this out. But just when I ran out. Ashes in the wind. Can we say so long to all my mild friends? Burden and bitterness, you can just keep on moving. Hey, now you are welcome here. Hey, from now till I walk the streets of gold, I see how you save my soul. The wayward son has found his way. It's a powerful one, church. So sing it with all your heart. Come on, sing it. Hey. Hell lost another one. I am free. Hey. I am free. I am free. Hell lost another one. I am free. I am free. I am free. Come on, sing it, sing it. Hell lost another one. I am free. I am free. I am free. Hell lost another one. I am free.
reason to rejoice. We have a reason to rejoice. Hey, and we sing this part like this. Hey, 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 get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Hey, get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Hey, get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Hey, hey.
past the age, through the earth may pass away, your word remains the same. Yeah, your history can prove there's nothing you can't do. You're faithful and true. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain steadfast. And let my heart learn when you speak a word, it will come. Yo 
place the name of Jesus. As the rest of us are worshiping, Malene, Psalm 40, Salmo 40, por favor, and I be. spirit of awakening, a spirit of remembrance. Remind our souls why we're here. Remind our souls who is here. Remind our souls who we have come to. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I strip away any spirit of ritual or religious dogma or just anything that would reduce this incredible declaration into just lyrics and songs and movement and beats. Push away everything that gets to our minds and our souls so that we may worship you as free men and women of God to whom you have loved, who you have lavished your love, Jesus. That's a big deal. Maybe you need a reminder. If this is you, any way along these three verses, if this has ever been you, if this has ever been you, do this simple thing. As children, grateful children, Lift up your hands before God. As I read this, if this has ever been you, if this has ever been you, I'm declaring in Jesus' name the simplicity of worship, of grateful hearts to a good God. Grateful hearts to a good God. Only he could do the spirit of Jesus. Only you could do that here. But has this ever been you? I waited patiently for the Lord. Has that ever have the been, has that ever been you? For months, for years, I waited. God, I waited. I waited patiently for the Lord. And then this came this moment where he turned to me and he heard my cry. Has that been you? Do you remember that moment of breakthrough when you knew that the face of God was turned to you, when his eyes were on you? Do you ever know, do you know that feeling of having the eyes of God on you, locked on you, your heart? your circumstance, your situation. When you've, if you've been there, you know it. And you'll never forget it. And then he did this. And then he did this, because we couldn't do it. He couldn't, we couldn't do it. So he had to do this. He lifted me out of the slimy pit. He brought me out of the mud and mire. Has that ever been you? He set my feet on a rock. He gave me a firm place to stand. And this is where you come in as a worshiper this morning. After he did that, After he came through for me, he put a new song in my mouth. That's right, lift up your song. He put a new song in my mouth. He put a new song in my mouth. Iria 
Jesus did for me. Many will hear my song of worship to the ends of the earth. And they will put their trust in him too. And the cycle continues. The cycle continues. This is the kingdom of God. This is how it works. Your brokenness becomes a victory. Your brokenness becomes a victory. Your victory, worshipers, becomes a hymn of praise to God. Your hymn of praise to God becomes somebody's reason to believe that maybe there is a God worth worshiping. If that's you, would you raise your arms before the living Jesus? Would you fill this house with the words of worship? Yes, doesn't have to be fancy, but it's you. It doesn't have to be fancy, but it's you. It doesn't have to be fancy, but it is you. And Jesus, we've got some folk that we love that maybe don't know this, God. We stand as intercessors now. Folk who are still in the mire and the mud and they don't know their way out, Lord, we bring them to you, Jesus. We bring our loved ones to you. Carry them in the name of Jesus. Carry your loved ones. Will you carry them here? It says, if two or three are gathered in my name, in my name, that's not a formula, that's this, our hearts together. We just love Jesus together. We exalt Jesus together. The spirit of Jesus is alive together. In a room like this, God can do anything. In a moment like this, God can do anything. And Jesus, now we, sick, we consecrate this moment. We consecrate this moment. And would you do miracles, Jesus? Mountain you won't climb up. Love on the people that we love. Breakthrough, 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 breakthrough. Believe God for miracles. Believe God for healing. Believe God for salvation. Believe God for your for your brother, your sister who's been lost forever.
we're about to we're about to transition to the communion table but before we do that I invite you to make this gesture extend your hands towards the altar just toward this thing I wouldn't ask y'all to do anything I don't do myself <laughs> I imagine this all the time Now, in the name of Jesus, in these last few seconds before we transition to the communion, before you take in the broken body of Jesus, before you take in the blood of Christ, know that what you're doing now is how we're going to connect with him in eternity. This is, this is, this is what we're going to do. Take a second. And just br br break your alabaster jar, this, whatever's left. Maybe there's just another drop or two of gratitude. A thank you, Jesus, that you didn't even know you had in you. And it's going to be the best. This is going to be the best two seconds of your day to leave that at his feet. Like that woman, that grateful woman didn't know what to, else to give her. Maybe that's you. Like that woman... At Simon's house, just drop it on his feet, drop it. Maybe as you're extending your hands, you, you're, say, you're saying that one last name. Lord, remember. Remember Jerome's on. Remember. Remember my brother, my, the one remaining brother who doesn't know Jesus. Remember. Remember my dad that he may surrender to you before he leaves this planet. Remember. Remember, Jesus, that my children have to eat and the rent's got to be paid. And that's two weeks and God, you're my provider. Remember. Remember, I love you, but there's this thing in my body that is still defying you and saying, that it's bigger than you, but I bring you that tumor. I bring you that blood clot. I, ble I bring you that diagnosis. I bring you that shadow of the valley of death. I bring that to you. I bring it to you. And God, I bring you this breath that you have given me. This is huge. It's a gift. Jesus. They never seem to end. And they're a gift from you. By the way, this is a fiber optic cable. It's a two-way street. As you're extending your hands, he's now flooding you. He's flooding you. With his presence, he's flooding you. If you let him, if you open yourself, if you open yourself, he's flooding you with his love. He's flooding you with his anointing. He's living inside your skin. If you let him, we call that communion. We call that communion. That's the communion of the saints. Let's transition to the Lord's table. A beautiful symbol of what we just did. Mis hermanos, lo podemos mover aún al frente de aquellos que están en, en, en el... Sí, venga. prepare to participate of what we know as the Lord's Supper. I'd like to invite those of you who are at home watching online.
to grab something that may be symbolic of this moment as well. And I'd like to invite you all to think with me for a moment. What does the lower supper mean to you? Why do we do this at church? Is it something that we do once a month? Do we do it on autopilot? Or do we really think about what it means to come before the Lord in remembrance of Him? When I think about the Lord's Supper, there is a verse that comes to mind in the book of Psalm, chapter 18, verse 6, when the psalmist says, In my distress, I called upon the Lord. To my God, I cried for help. From his temple, he heard my voice, and my cry to him reached his ears. When I think about that, I think about what the people of Israel were experiencing under the oppression of Egypt and how they were crying out to God for deliverance. The Passover and the Last Supper are connected. The final meal that Jesus had with his disciples when he was on earth, before he was crucified, took place immediately before his betrayal. This meal was a reminder for the Jewish people of the deliverance that God had brought at the Exodus when God was judging the nation of Egypt for oppressing the Israelites. During the Passover, a lamb was sacrificed and the people of God put the blood of the lamb in their homes. And when the angel of death went by, they were spared, they were forgiven, they were delivered. Before Jesus died, he was announcing that his crucifixion was going to bring freedom for anyone who was bound by sin, for anyone who was oppressed by their sin. So when Paul invites us to partake of this in remembrance of Christ, I think he's inviting us to remember what the sacrifice meant. If you were a Jew, you would remember how your people were oppressed by Egypt and how God brought deliverance. And that alone would bring you to your knees in gratitude for what the Lord had done for you and for your people. Some of us here will probably remember a moment in our life when we were oppressed, where we had hit rock bottom, and we cried out to the Lord in our distress, and he delivered us. So today, as we take the bread and the wine, I want us to be thinking about this. I want you to picture a moment in your life where God showed up for you. And maybe if it was not you, someone whom you love. And I invite you to read with me the words of Paul in 1 Corinthians. 23. For what I receive from the Lord, what I also pass on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So let's eat remember his sacrifice. I imagine Jesus discussing with his disciples the meaning of Passover for their people and their ancestors. They were having a meal 
they were probably remembering. Paul continues in verse 25, and he says, In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whatever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's drink the wine. Paul says that whenever we do this, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And I think what that means for us is that as we continue to remember what God has done for us, we share that with others to give him glory. That we share with people that we were dead in our sin and now we have redemption to Christ. That once we come to Christ, there is no condemnation. You see, people out there might condemn you for your past, for your sin. Sometimes our relatives condemn us. They don't let, they don't let us forget when we have failed. Sometimes we, as believers, condemn other people because of their failures. But when Christ tells us to remember these things, he's telling us to remember that we have been saved by grace alone, by his sacrifice alone, nothing that we can do. And therefore, as we leave this place today, I encourage you to bring that message to your friends, to your relatives, that it doesn't matter where they're at, in Christ, there is no condemnation. And the same Christ that died for us is the same Christ that died for them. And they can come before his presence as they are. Let's pray. God, we thank you for your word and for the meaning and the history behind all of it, God. Thank you because you have allowed us to come into your presence through your sacrifice. You've reconciled us with yourself. And as we remember these things, God, I pray that you will help us to pass them on to others, to extend the same welcoming to other broken sinners who acknowledge their sin so that they can also enjoy the gift of your salvation and your grace. And Lord, with thankful hearts, we now prepare to give to you from what you have given us. Thank you because you are the one who provides for us. And I pray that you will bless this offering that we're about to collect, God that you will see each person that's giving to you and that you will honor their gifts, God. And most importantly, Lord, that you will take these gifts and use them to continue to build your kingdom, God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The ushers will come in a moment to collect your tithes and offerings. And while we're giving financial offerings, I'd like to invite you to remember also to set aside time to give of your life this week, to be the hands and feet of Jesus and visit someone who may be in a hospital, somebody who may be alone in their home, and bring good news of encouragement where they are. As the ushers collect the offering, I want to share with you a couple of announcements of things that are happening at our church. Um, first, today, right after this, um, we'll gather in the fourth floor for our time of fellowship. 
And um, it's a time for you to get to know other people. If you're new or you've been here for a while and you just want to chat, eat some food, we'll invite you to join us in the fourth floor right after the service. Then um, on Saturday, I'd like to invite Victoria um, to come up and join me here and um, share with us about a special gathering that's taking place at the state capitol. Um, Thank you. Ooh, hot. So numerous people have said to me, you've got to let the people know how important this is. This is really important, and it's for everybody. So it's muy importante. It's muy necesario. And that's the end of my Spanish for right now. But this Saturday, between one and three, we are all invited to pray, to cry out to God, to save our country and our children and our grandchildren and our nieces and nephews and our neighbor's kids. There is trouble in the land and we are in the midst of a battle. And God has called us to pray to fast and to stand. Believers in every state are gathering at their state capitals between 1 and 3 p.m. this Saturday. For all of us who are able, please come to the State House. This is sponsored by a group called Don't Mess With Our Kids. Thank you. Please register at the QR code. You can use the QR code there. You can also get information at don'tmesswithourkids.us. If you can't be at the State House, there's a lot of stuff going on, we understand. If you can't be at the State House, as I unfortunately cannot, I am going to be praying during those two hours. But for all of you who can, please come to the State House. There's going to be a group gathering here at the church right at 12, right at the end of the women's conference that's happening, um, and going to take the orange line over to the State House. Jahaira is going to be organizing that, and if you have questions, you can see her. There is parking in the uh, Boston Common Garage, but please come to the State House um, and pray for our country. God is on the move. God is on the move and he has been calling for this through dreams, through visions, through miraculous events that have networked people together across Massachusetts and across the country. And I thank him that while we are in the midst of a battle, he knows, he knows and he is working through us. Thank you so much. Thanks, Victoria. Can you share with us a little bit about the sponsoring organization, Don't Mess With Our Kids, sure, and sure. what they stand for, and, and part of what the focus prayer of this would be? Yes, yes. So Don't Mess With Our Kids is a group that also was part of Her Voice movement, and they are moms and grandmoms and concerned women about what's happening in our country with the agenda to um, steal our kids. I hate to say that, but that's what it is. That's what it is. And so they have called for united prayer. Um, they also have, we have a, a march happening on October 12th to really, just to cry out to God to preserve the family, to preserve the family in our country. Um, and. Also, they have partnered with Lou Engel um, because God gave Lou the same call for a million women, a million Esthers and Mordecais, Esthers and their families to come to the mall um, on October 12th in Washington, D.C. And yeah. I know you know a lot about it, Jonathan, so maybe no, of you want to explain some more. No, I think this is an important gathering because this is something that has been taking place for the past six, seven years throughout Latin America. And I'm kind of excited to see it reach this nation now. Um, there's been, I think it started in Peru um, many years ago, um, a, a group of Christians concerned about the indoctrination that's taking place in the public schools um, organized themselves to go before the government and say, we want sound teaching in our schools for our children. Um, you know, we 
don't ad ad adhere to this new way of thinking that's infiltrating the schools. And I think this is something that not only pertains to Christians, I think people also of other faith and people who don't even believe in God, but also adhere to the same traditional family values um, are in support of this. So um, this is not just a church thing. You may have neighbors that, you know, agree with us and, you know, in our definition of what marriage is, family, um, you know, what kids need. Um, so we encourage you to invite them, you know, and, and while this event on Saturday is to pray, this is just one of many other things that we can do. So I would encourage you to go online, look up the Don't Mess um, with Our Kids movement and the different ways that you can get involved and also be part of solutions in your districts, with your schools, and um, really empowering parents to have a voice, um, you know, for their children. So thank you, Victoria. For You're welcome, and thank you, Sharon. Um, so that's going to be this Saturday at 1. Um, I'd like to have Giovanni come up and join me here. She's going to share with us a little bit about an event um, uh, that BTA has. And while she comes, this Saturday, the Good Works Servants Ministry, it's a missionary group of our church that does missionary work in Honduras. They're having a fundraiser, and their fundraiser is that they're selling food, um, you know, raising money for their next trip to Honduras. So if you don't want to cook on Saturday, um, you can, um, I don't know if we have a, a slide for them, but if not, maybe on our church website there is information. But you can uh, contact them and stop by their home and pick up a delicious food and you'll be supporting the work taking place in Honduras um, through their ministry. Uh, good morning. Um, for those of you that don't know me, I know we've got a lot of new people here at church. My name is Giovanni Polcini. And I actually have a couple of announcements, but I'm going to start um, with the one about Boston Trinity Academy. I don't know how many of you are familiar with uh, that school. It's a Christian co-educational college preparatory school in Hyde Park. I know that David Diaz is very familiar since um, his uh, eldest son graduated from Boston Trinity and his daughter's currently there. Alice Drew is the art uh, chair of Boston Trinity Academy and Henry, her oldest, is there as well. And we just want to um, let parents of children who are fifth grade and up, so if your child is going from fifth to sixth grade, you may want to start looking at Boston Trinity Academy. It goes from sixth through twelfth grade. And I actually work there. I am in the administration there. I do fundraising for them. But they are going to be here on Sunday 21, so Sunday, um, April 21st. And they're going to be here after the second service. So if you attend the morning service, you want to just plan around it so that you can come back. And if you have any questions, they are going to be here with a lot of different materials. Uh, and next week, uh, when I do the announcement, you're actually going to get to see a little video about Boston Trinity Academy. I am really proud to work there. And if you're concerned about Boston Public Schools messing with your kids, Boston Trinity Academy is a place where you want them to go. It is a Christian school. All of the teachers, all the faculty sign statements of faith, and you will not find any of the cultural bend towards gender identity teaching there. So it's a safe space for your kids. I encourage you, again, if you are a parent of a fifth grader or any grade between fifth and twelfth, to start looking at Boston Trinity Academy. It's an amazing school. So that's an open house after the second service here at our church. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you for um, clarifying that. And then the second announcement that I want to um, talk about, since I am involved with the Sunday Fellowship, how many of you enjoy the Sunday Fellowship upstairs after the service? I know many of you come up. And I just want to um, affirm and thank the people who have been donating and have been volunteering every Sunday. They come faithfully. They prepare the food. They stay after. They clean up. They get everything set up for the next Sunday. And so I just want to thank you if you are in the group of people who does that faithfully every Sunday. What I am going to ask now is that we do have a need. We have a need for people to commit Pick one Sunday, first Sunday, second Sunday, third Sunday, fourth Sunday, where you bring cheese or crackers or something else that we can set out for the community. 
So we are just leaning on you as our community to help continue to make the Sunday Fellowship a success. So please, please come and see me after the service. I'm going to be upstairs in the fellowship. And so if you want to sign up to bring something, just let me know, and I will put you on the schedule. All right, thank you. So cheese, oranges, muffins, whatever, right? On your Anything. way to church, stop by yes. Stop and Shop, and then just come and drop it off in the fourth floor. Yep. So yep. Yep. great. Thank, thank you, you, Giovanni. Um, so yeah, so I think those are the announcements that I have for now. And um, I'd like to invite Pastor Mick um, to go on stage, actually, <laughs> with Pastor Good morning, church. I'm so excited to be here one more time to share the word of God with you. And I believe I have a word from the Lord for this morning one more time. We always have a word from the Lord for this church. I believe this morning will happen again. We're going to read the word of God. I'm going to ask Pastor Sam to read Luke chapter 24. We're going to read verse 13 to 20 and 28 to 32. And after that, Pastor Sam is going to pray with us. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Luke chapter 24, starting with verse 13. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them named Cleopas asked him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things, he asked, about Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. Skipping to verse 28. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. And they asked each other, weren't our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? Let's pray. First God, we thank you for the amazing privilege of having such easy access to the word of life. Yes. May we, in our lifetimes, in this country, may we never take for granted how big a deal this is, how wonderful a miracle it is, that we can hear your word. Thank you, for, thank you Holy Spirit, for inhabiting Pastor Mick and inspiring this word in him. Would you help him to transmit this word faithfully as you've given it to him? Would you help me to transmit this even further into English? And then help every heart, every mind, everyone who's to receive this, both here, dear Lord God, and literally transmit it online to receive the living word of God this morning. And may it change us as, it, as we do in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's go to work. Gloria a Dios. <laughs> Después de la pasión y la resurrección de Cristo, había en Jerusalén un ambiente de mucha 
confusion. Uh, after, after the crucifixion, the passion, and, um, and leading up to the resurrection, there was a lot of confusion uh, and, and even uh, a, a sense of being downcast in Jerusalem. La maioria de los discípulos estavam decepcionados e, e confundidos. Haviam oídos que el Señor, oído que el Señor era el Cristo. Amen. Uh, most of the disciples, really all of them, were depressed, were dismayed, and were a bit bewildered because they were convinced that Jesus was their promised Messiah. Ellos habían presenciado los milagros de Jesús. They witnessed the miracles of Jesus. Habían escuchado que Jesús era aquel que redimiría y salvaría a Israel. They had heard that Jesus would be the one who would redeem and save Israel. Y liberaría a Israel del dominio de Roma. And he would free. They expected him to free uh, Israel from the dominion, the rule of Rome. E se usted observa el versículo 21, dice, pero nosotros esperábamos que él era el que había de redimir a Israel. And in verse 21, uh, you hear these disciples saying, and we expected he would be the one who would redeem Israel. Y ahora, además de todo esto, hoy es el tercer día Que esto ha acontecido. And on top of all of this, this is the third day that this has taken place. Dice la palabra que dos de ellos iban de camino a una aldea llamada Emmaus, que quedaba más o menos a unos 12 kilómetros de Jerusalén. And the word says that two of them were on their way to a village called Emmaus that was about 12 kilometers or about seven and a half miles from Jerusalem. Y yo, cre yo creo personalmente que ellos estaban regresando quizás a su vida normal. And I believe they were on their way to go back to their normal life. Porque para ellos todo había terminado. Because for them it was it was all over. Había muerto su expectativa y su esperanza. Their hopes had died. Their expectations had died. La Biblia no menciona el nombre del segundo discípulo. The Bible doesn't mention the name of the second disciple. Algunos, algunos teólogos creemos que era la esposa de Cleofas. Many believe that it might have been the wife of Cleofas. This la palabra en Juan capítulo 19, versículo 25. The word says in John chapter 19, verse 25. Estaba junto a la cruz Jesús su madre y la hermana de su madre, María, mujer de Cleofas y María Magdalena. Amen. His mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleophas and Mary Magdalene, were standing by the cross of Jesus. O sea, había tres Marías junto a la cruz. In other words, there were three Marys near the cross. La María, Madre de Jesús. Mary, the mother of Jesus. Ma María, esposa de Cleophas. Mary, the wife of Cleophas. Y María Magdalena. And Mary Magdalene. Pero la razón por que yo creo la que esta María, que este otro discípulo, era la esposa de Cleophas. And many scholars uh, believe that the, uh, this other disciple was the very wife of Cleophas. Y yo creo que era su esposa porque estaban discutiendo. And I believe it was his wife because they were having, it sounded a discussion, an argument. Emmaus viene a simbolizar el abandono del propósito de Dios y el debilitamiento de la fe cristiana. Uh, Emmaus then comes to represent the abandoning of the hope in Christ and abandoning of the church's uh, 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 the, the, the uh, confidence in Jesus. Y, mis amados hermanos, muchas veces en nuestras vidas, las cosas que nos pasan, situaciones que acontecen en nuestra vida diaria. And uh, brethren, many times the, the sorts of things that happen to us in our daily lives. Y porque estas cosas suceden con nosotros, muchas veces vienen a nuestra mente ideas equivocadas sobre nuestro Dios. And many times these things will, will batter our minds and, and create just these mistaken images 
of the kingdom of God. Se, se, se usted, pero a veces nos preguntamos por qué Dios no me contesta. And maybe this hasn't happened to you, but sometimes we ask ourselves, why doesn't God answer? Por qué Dios no me ayuda? Why doesn't God help us? A veces preguntamos por qué Dios no cambia mi situación. Sometimes we ask why doesn't God change my situation? Por qué Dios no interfiere en mi dolor? Why doesn't God interfere in my pain? Por qué Dios me ha dejado solo? Why has God left me alone? Y hoy en día es común encontrarnos con cristianos resentidos con Dios. It's very common these days to find Christians who are outright resentful of their God. Cristianos que se sienten defraudados de Dios. Christians who feel that, that God has let them down, defrauded them. Y están molestos con el Señor. And, uh, and they're a little miffed with Jesus. Y es por eso que en esta mañana reflexionaremos sobre esas ideas equivocadas que muchos de nosotros tenemos sobre Dios y la respuesta que su palabra nos da a estas, estos cuestionamientos. And that's why it's worthwhile to, to contemplate squarely some of these wrong ideas that many of us have about God and, and, and hear the response of Scripture to these ideas. Por, mis amados hermanos, porque muchas de las veces... Because, brother, many of these times, las cosas no salen como queríamos o como pensábamos. Well, sometimes things don't turn out the way we wanted them to or where we, we thought they would turn out. Y pensamos, ¿por qué no recibimos la respuesta que esperamos de Dios? And we, and we wonder, why didn't we receive the response that we expected of the Lord? Y con todo enojo, muchas veces decimos, oh, Dios hace lo que le da la gana. And, and, and often we'll say, well, you know what? God does whatever he feels like doing. Y es verdad, él es soberano. And it, well, it's true, he is sovereign. Él es rey. He's, he's our king. Él es el dueño. He is in charge, he's the owner. Pero no es como nosotros que hacemos lo que, lo, lo, lo que nos da la gana. But it's, it's, it's not as if it's us who would be the ones doing what we feel like doing. Dios no hace con nuestra vida apenas lo que le da la gana. He doesn't do with our lives. He doesn't treat us as in a way where, you know, just, he just arbitrarily does whatever he feels like doing. Ele obre nuestras vidas con propósitos perfectos. Amen. He works in our lives with fixed purposes and a fixed goal with our lives. Isso porque todo que Deus não permite It's because so that everything that God does not permit está dentro de sus planes perfectos para ti y para mí are in accord with his perfect plan, his perfect plan for you and for me. Y aunque muchas veces incomprensibles son para nosotros los planes de Dios, él está obrando en mi vida y en tu vida de forma perfecta. And even though sometimes the ways of the Lord seem incomprehensible to you and me, they, they, they just don't make sense, he's doing something Perfect. He's doing something right in our lives. Yes, por eso que en el Salmo 138, en el versículo 8, la palabra dice que Jehová cumplirá su propósito en mi vida. And that's why uh, in the Salmo 138, versículo 8. And in Psalm 138, verse 8, it says, The Lord will fulfill for us his purposes. In Romanos capítulo 8, in the versículo 28, dice que sabemos que a los que amo a Dios, todas las cosas les ayudan a bien, esto es, a los que conforme su propósito son llamados. And in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, he says, we know that all things work to the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purposes. Lo que la Biblia nos dice, hermanos, es que en su justicia, Él no pondrá en mí y en ti una carga más grande de lo que nuestras fuerzas puedan soportar. Hey, what, what the Word is telling us is that in His righteousness, God is not going to place on you or me a burden that is too great for us to bear. La primera idea equivocada que tenemos 
del Señor. Es la idea de que Dios nos abandona cuando más lo necesitamos. The first wrong idea that we have is that God abandons us when we need him the most. En Salmos, Salmo 10, en el versículo 1, porque está lejos, oh Jehová, y te escondes en el tiempo de la tribulación. Psalm 10, verse 1 declares, Why, O oh Lord, do you stand far off? Why do you hide yourself in the times of trouble? Y pensaba allí en la noche de que tenemos que comprender que Satanás, nuestro adversario, siempre aprovechará de los momentos de dolor, de enfermedad, de tristeza, para preguntarnos, ¿dónde está tu Dios? And, and you got to be mindful that it's precisely in our tough times, in our, in our times of, of, of pain, in our times of, of anguish, and in our times of sadness, you can expect Satan to show up and try to bear advantage of those very moments of our, of our fragility. Y siempre el diablo te preguntará, ¿dónde está tu Dios? And the, and the devil will ask you, as he asked the psalmist David, where is your God? Y, y nos dejamos llevar por esta idea diabólica. And we let ourselves be tossed through and fro nos by sentimos, these diabolical nos ideas. Nos sentimos abandonados, nos sentimos desamparados. We feel abandoned, we feel uh, 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 adrift. Y ese es el problema de la iglesia de Jesús que se deja llevar por sentimientos de abandonos, por sentimientos y por emociones apenas. And that's the problem with the church of Jesus Christ these days. We let ourselves be led uh, by our emotions. We let ourselves be led by our frustrations. Y nos olvidamos de las promesas de Dios. And we forget the promises of God. Nos olvidamos de su amor y su fidelidad. Uh, we forget his love and his faithfulness. Oiga, mi hermano, tienes que esperar por tu milagro. Brother and sisters, we need to expect, wait for our miracle. Los dos discípulos en el camino de Maús, ellos no esperaron hasta el domingo. Uh, the two uh, disciples on their way to Maús, they weren't, they weren't waiting for Sunday morning. Ellos no sabían en qué comentar. They had no idea on what their faith rests or what to comment on. Si Dios prometió, Él no es hijo de hombre para que mienta. Amen. If God made you a promise, he's not the son of man for him to lie. Jesus, ele va caminando con nosotros. Jesus is walking along the way with us. Donde estaba Jesus en las situaciones más complicadas y difíciles de tu vida? Where was Jesus in those most difficult and most complicated moments of your lives? Permítame decirte, él estaba ahí. Let me remind you, he was there with you. A tu lado. Right beside you. A nuestro lado. Right next to you. Esperando momento, el momento exacto para consolarnos. Waiting for the exact moment to console us. Él ha prometido estar con nosotros todos los días de nuestra vida. He promised to be with us all of the days of our lives. In los momentos de mayores tribulaciones. In the moments of greatest difficulty and tribulation. Podemos confirmar Isaías 41, versículo 10. We can confirm Isaiah 41, verse 10. Que dice, no temas, porque yo estoy contigo. No desmayes, porque yo soy tu Dios. Que te esfuerzo, siempre te ayudaré. Siempre te sustentaré con la diestra de mi justicia. Which declares, so do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I'm your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Amen. Podemos recordar Mateo capítulo 28, la parte B del versículo 20 que dice, Y he aquí yo estoy con vosotros todos los días hasta el fin del mundo. And we can recall the closing words of the gospel of Matthew. And surely I am with you always, even to the very end of the world. Yo creo que Cristo provocó el encuentro con esos dos discípulos junto al camino de Maús para volver a rescatarles para el regreso hasta él, hacia él. I believe that Jesus himself provoked, uh, Jesus himself orchestrated this encounter between these two disciples. 
because he loved them so much, he reached out to them to rescue them and spin them right back around to him. Ele está presente acompanhando a Cleófas e a ti e a mim. He's there accompanying Cleophas. He's there accompanying me. He's there accompanying you. In those moments of tribulation. In those moments of tribulation. In moments of pesar and tristeza. In those moments that weigh on us. Those si moments of sadness. la palabra de Dios que dice estaré con vosotros todos los días hasta el fin. That promise of the Lord is fulfilled. I'm going to be with you always, even to the end. Y él te dice esta mañana. And he Yo tells te you this morning. I will go with you. Sempre estarei contigo. I will always be with you. Jesus provoca el encuentro del cristiano con la cruz. And Jesus orchestrates this encounter of the Christian with the cross. Y debemos aprovechar ese momento del encuentro con la cruz para reconocer a Jesús en momentos de decepciones. And we should, uh, we should embrace this idea, this moment of, those, of, the, of the cross in these moments of, of, of deception. And anger. La segunda idea equivocada que tenemos. The second wrong idea that we have. Es de la que Dios no le importa nuestro sufrimiento. Is that God, God doesn't care about our affliction and our sufferings. Lamentaciones capítulo 3 versículo 56. Oíste mi voz, no escondas tu oído al clamor de mis suspiros. Amen. In the book of Lamentations chapter 3, you heard my plea. Do not close your ears to my cry for relief. ¿Cuántos aquí están de acuerdo conmigo de que hay momentos en nuestra vida que pensamos que Dios está indiferente a nuestro dolor? How many of you uh, would agree that there come, there, there come times in our lives where we believe that, that God is at best indifferent to our pain? Hay momentos que pensamos que Dios está indiferente a nuestra aflicción. There are moments that we believe that God is at best indifferent to our affliction. Há momentos que creemos que Deus, a Deus não lhe importa nosso sofrimento. There are times where we've come to the conclusion that God doesn't care about our suffering. E é na palavra de Deus que, que encontramos que em realidade esta ideia está completamente equivocada. And it's and all over Scripture we discover that this idea is completely wrong. El Padre se importa y se angustia con nuestras tristezas y nuestras aflicciones. The, our Heavenly Father is distressed and is in anguish about our, our afflictions and our suffering. Dios se compadece como un Padre Amen. por el dolor de sus hijos. Uh, God's heart is broken for us as a father would be over his children. Jesús se compadece por el dolor de las personas que sufren. The Lord has compassion over the pain of those who suffer. Y tal vez preguntas, entonces, ¿por qué entonces mm. Dios permite nuestro dolor? ¿Por qué permite nuestro sufrimiento? And then, it's a good question to ask yourself, then why does he even allow us to suffer? Why, if he is so aware, does he even allow this affliction? Yo quiero afirmarse en esta mañana de que Dios está formando en ti un carácter que sea parecido con el de Jesús. I just want to remind you of the end game. And the end game is that the Lord is forming in you a character that resembles the character of Jesus himself. Tercero. Third. Caminamos tristes porque solamente conocemos acerca de Jesús. Tenemos solamente un buen concepto acerca de Jesús. Amen. Uh, we, sometimes we walk around with this sadness because we just know just enough about Jesus, and we have these pleasant ideas about Jesus. Y si usted observa en el de versículos 29, 19 a 21 de Lucas capítulo 24, en nuestro pasaje, dice que ellos comentaban acerca de Jesús Nazareno, que era profeta, que era poderoso, en palabra delante de Dios. Amen. And, and here, you, it, it, it's great to hear from them explaining to Jesus in this passage 
who they, what they thought of Jesus. Oh, yes, it, it, this is about Jesus of Nazareth, that he was a prophet, that he's powerful in word and deed before God and before the people. Eles conheciam muito acerca de Jesus. Tinham um bom conceito do Senhor. They they knew many things about Jesus. They had they had a a a, a good uh, idea of him, good concept of him. They they had pleasant uh, pleasant thoughts about Jesus. E essa era, era a razão porque podiam expressar que Jesus era varão profeta, poderoso em obra, poderoso em palavra. And this is the reason why they were able to express, oh no, Jesus was a prophet, was powerful in word and powerful in deed. E que foi sentenciado à morte e que morreu crucificado. And that he was sentenced to death and that he died a death of crucifixion. E declararam que ele era o Redentor de Israel. And they went so far as to declare that Jesus was the Redeemer of Israel. E já ouviu que muitos somos como Cleófas e seu companheiro no caminho a Emmaus. And, and perhaps many of us are like Cleophas and his companion on the way to Emmaus. Conhecemos sobre Deus. We know about Jesus. Sabemos o que a palavra a dito sobre ele. We know what the word has declared about him. Reconocemos que ele é poderoso. We recognize that he's powerful. Reconocemos que ele faz milagres. We recognize that he does miracles. Reconocemos que Deus é bueno. We recognize that he is good. Reconocemos que ele há cuidado de nós outros. We recognize that he's taking good care of us. Reconocemos que ele tem a última palavra quando o médico lhe apresenta um diagnóstico de um câncer ou uma enfermidade incurável. We realize that when the doctor gives us a, 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 a diagnosis of cancer or some other life-controlling uh, life illness, it is Jesus who has the last word. Pero quando vienen los días difíciles en nuestras vidas, cuando pasamos por los momentos de enfermedad. But when difficult times reach our lives, when we go through moments of sadness and challenge. Quando passamos por el desierto de la escasez. When we go through the desert of, 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 of uh, economic challenge. E quando passamos, quando passamos por tempos de soledade ou abandono. And when we go through uh, moments of, of, of being uh, isolated and feeling abandoned. Nos entristecemos como os discípulos de caminho a Emmaus e perguntamos onde está Deus. We, we, we too are saddened and like the disciples on the way to Emmaus we ask where is God? E por que nos passa isso? And why? Why are we going through this? Primeiro lugar porque em verdade não lemos creído de todo nosso coração. Well for the for for one thing it's because we haven't truly believed we, we believed in him from the very bottom of our of our hearts. E essa foi a resposta de Jesus. And that was the answer of Jesus. Versículo 25. Verse 25. Então se ele diz, oh insensatos e tardos de coração para crer todo o que os profetas han dito. And he said to them, how foolish you are and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Verso 26, não, é, não era necessário que Cristo padecer estas coisas e que entrar em sua glória? Well, uh, 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 did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and only then, after that, enter the glory? E começando desde Moisés e seguindo por todos os profetas, lhes declarava em toda a escritura o que de ele diziam. And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what, all, what was said in the scriptures concerning himself. Eu creio que se esses discípulos que iam de caminho a Emmaus houvera tenido não só um conceito sobre Deus. I believe that if these disciples who were on their way to Emmaus had more than just a, con a conception of God, an idea of God. Sino que verdadeiramente houvera creído em el Senhor e em suas promessas. But if they, if, if they had truly believed in the Lord and in his promises. E las profecias que sobre ele se hacen en la palabra. And the prophecies declared over him in the word. 
não houvera estado tão tristes. Perhaps they wouldn't have been so sad. Não se não não se houvera sentido decepcionados por as coisas que haviam passado com o Senhor. They would not have felt dismayed over the things that had had happened to the Lord in Jerusalem. E o mesmo passa com os outros. Same thing. Same thing happens to us. Se vamos por a vida tristes preocupados ou decepcionados por as coisas que estão ocorrendo em nossa existência. When we walk around sad or or dismayed or disappointed by the things that ba uh, batter us in our daily lives. Ou por os problemas que estamos enfrentando ou por as crises que estamos vivendo. Or, or by the problems that we confront or the crises that we endure. É porque em realidade não conhecemos as promessas do Senhor ou não lhe hemos creído como ele é poderoso em obras e em palavras. Amen. It's because we don't really understand all the promises of God or we don't realize what we mean what scripture means when he say that Jesus is powerful in word and in deed la segunda razón por qué nos pasa eso es porque no lo reconocemos en nuestra vida diaria the other reason the second reason why this should happen to us is because we don't recognize the lord we don't see the fingerprints of the lord in our daily lives me encanta esse passagem da escritura. I love that passage in the scriptures. E me gusta a parte quando Jesus chega à aldeia de Emaús. And I love that uh, that detail that when they get to the village of Emaús. E diz a palavra que ele hizo como que iba mais lejos. And he and it and the word says that he made as if he was going to continue up, up this road. Mas eles lhe obrigaram a quedar-se dizendo quedate com os outros porque se há se tarde e já o dia há declinado. And they they begged they begged him they urged him to stay saying stay with us for it's nearly evening and the day is almost over. Eu não sei o que tinham para comer este dia. I don't know what they had to eat that night. Pero aconteceu que quando estavam estava sentado com eles à la mesa. But it, as it turns out that when he sat down with them at the table, this is the Bible that Jesus took the bread. The word says that the Lord took the bread, lo partiu, broke it, and sus ojos fueron abiertos, and their eyes were open. Yo creo, mis hermanos, que cuando Jesús, yo no sé si Jesús tenía una manera específica de partir el pan, una forma particular de partir el pan. I, I don't know if Jesus had a particular way of breaking the bread. O quizás cuando alzó su mano para dar gracias, vieron sus heridas. Amen. Or maybe when he lifted up his hands to give thanks, they saw the wounds on his wrists. Esses discípulos haviam caminhado horas com o Senhor, these, mais ou menos dois a três horas. Uh, these disciples had walked hours with the Lord, maybe two or three hours. Pero não não lhe haviam reconhecido, estavam tristes. They had not recognized him. They were sad. Da, de la misma maneira, nós outros não veremos os milagros e a grande obra de Deus em nossas vidas se permitirmos que as preocupações e as angústias do dia a dia, as tribulações da vida nos alerrem de nosso Deus. Same with us. Uh, the Lord may walk with us and uh, may accompany us, but we won't see Him, even as He does, if we allow uh, to be ourselves to be overwhelmed by our problems and overwhelmed by our afflictions. Quizás tu estás caminando em tua vida em caminho a Emmaus. Maybe you, in your life now, are on your way to Emmaus. Preocupado com as deudas. Oh, worried about your debts. Por as enfermidades. By illnesses. Por os problemas in tu hogar or la, la rebeldia de tus hijos by the problems in your home or the rebellion uh, the, 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 uh, among your children quizá la falta de empleo la escasez económica uh, maybe uh, the, uh, your economic scarcity or maybe you just need a job 
en todas estas circunstancias, in all of these circumstances, tú no logras reconocer que Jesús camina a tu lado. You, you've yet to notice that Jesus is walking beside you. Dice la palabra the word declares, en el Salmo 23, versículo 4. Psalm 23, verse 4. Aunque ande en el valle de sombra de muerte, no temeré mal alguno, porque tú estarás conmigo, tu vara y tu callado me infunde aliento. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you, for thou art with me. Your rod and your staff accompany me. Permita-me decir-te nesta manhã, aun que estés passando por os momentos mais difíceis e complicados de tua vida, even if you're going through the toughest, even if you're going through the most complicated moments of your life. Diz a palavra Isaías 43, versículo 2. Uh, the word declares in Isaiah 43, verse 2. Quando passes por as águas, eu estarei contigo. E se por os rios não te anegarão. Quando passes por o fogo, não te queimarás. Nem a chama arderá em ti. Diz a palavra de Deus. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep you away. And when you walk through the fire, You will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze, says the word of God. Aunque estés enfrentando las mayores batallas de tu vida, aunque el propio diablo se haya levantado contra ti, Dios camina hoy a tu lado. Even if you're going through the most horrendous moments of your life, even if you're going through the toughest pain of your life, God is walking alongside with you. Ele prometeu e cumprirá sua palavra. He promised and he will fulfill his word. Josué capítulo 1 versículo 5. Joshua chapter 1 verse 5. Nadie te podrá hacer frente en todos los días de tu vida. Como estuve con Moisés, estarei contigo, não te deixarei, não te desampararé. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. Aunque no lo veamos en el camino. Even if we don't see him along the road. Y muchas veces no lo sintamos. And many times we don't, we don't feel him, sense him. Él ha prometido. Y si Él ha prometido, Él lo cumplirá. He has promised. And if He has promised, He will fulfill it. Amen. Ya no estemos tristes y abatidos. Let us now not be sad or, 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 or confused. Jesús, Jesús ha resucitado. Pedamos al Cristo resucitado que nos muestre su presencia en momentos de aflicciones. The Lord has risen. So now, let's ask the risen Lord to demonstrate his, his, his presence to us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Algunas, algunas revelaciones de ese, de ese pasaje que me encanta. There are some wonderful revelations from this passage that I just love. Primero, Jesús, en los momentos más críticos y difíciles, jamás nos abandona. First, Jesus, in the most critical, difficult moments that we face, will never abandon us. Él se une a nosotros en nuestro camino. He links himself to us along the way. Él se tropieza literalmente con nuestras necesidades. He will literally... Uh, uh, tr uh, accompany us and embrace us in all of our needs. He nos acompaña con su presencia y una poderosa esperanza y fe. And he will accompany us with his presence and with a powerful right hand to save us. La segunda revelación. The second revelation that Cristo I love. Cristo se muestra como un simple forastero según la palabra. Uh, Jesus just shows himself as a simple stranger in Jerusalem as the word declares. O sea, él submete a nuestro nivel y capacidad para lograr In other words, the Lord uh, stoops down to our level and our capacity to know him and recognize him and understand him. Mira su alrededor. 
Look around you. Mira seu lado. Look to, to, at your side. Que vês? What do you see? La expresión de la presencia de Dios. You're looking at the, uh, the very expression of the presence of God. Amen. Glory to Dios. Glory to God. La tercera revelación de este pasaje debemos conocer las escrituras para identificar los tiempos. Amen. Uh, the third revelation is we should know the scriptures in order to identify the times that we're living in. Debemos conocer las profecías. We should know the prophecies. Hallelujah. Praise El Antiguo Testamento. Uh, we should know the Old Testament. El Nuevo Testamento. The New Testament. Y saber que Jesús está a las puertas. Amen. And know that Jesus, Jesus is at the door. Y debemos prepararnos para un encuentro con Él. And we should prepare our, ourselves for an encounter with Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 La palabra dice Juan capítulo 15 de 13 a 15. John chapter 15 verses 13 to 15. Nadie declares, tiene mayor amor que este. No one has greater love than this. Que uno ponga su vida por sus amigos. That he should lay down one, his life for his friends. Vosotros sois mis amigos y hacéis lo que yo os mando. You are my friends if you do what I command. Y no llamaréis siervos porque el siervo no sabe lo que hace su señor. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know what is his master's business. Pero os he llamado amigos porque todas las cosas que oí de mi padre os la he dado a conocer. Instead, I shall call you friends for everything that I've learned from my father, I've made known to you. Ele quer hoje chamar-te de meu amigo. He wants to call you his friend today. Caminar contigo em la tribulação. Walk with you in your times of trial. Em tuas preocupações. In all of your worries. Em tuas angústias. In your anguish. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. El quinto. In the fifth. Es el tiempo de que lo invitemos a entrar en nuestra Amen. casa y abrir nuestro corazón y decir, Jesús, quédate conmigo. And it's time for us to invite him in, into our home and into our hearts and say, Lord, stay with me. Porque ya, ya ha oscurecido. Because it's getting dark. Yo no puedo ver con claridad las situaciones de mi vida. I can't see with clarity the situations in my life. Necesito que te quedes conmigo, Jesús. I need you to stay with me, Jesus. Ya estás cansado de pelear. If you're tired of of um, estás cansado of de discusiones. If you're tired of these uh, arguments and discussions. Ya no quieres el desánimo. Uh, do not stay uh, with in, in, in dismay. Te and digo, te digo en esta mañana, si Jesús está en tu casa, permita que él bendiga el pan de tu casa Amen. Y, 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 te, y te alimente Amen. con la verdad. Amen. If the Lord, if let him into your home, and as you let him into your home, hand him the, invite him to the table, and let him bless. The bread upon your table and bless your home with the bread of life. Cuando él está en tu casa, when he's él in your home, he tu pan, él bendice tus negocios y la prosperidad entra a tu vida. When he's in your home, he will bless your bread. He will bless your 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 job. He will bless your bless you with provision and prosperity enters and joy enters with Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Quanto le están servindo al Señor de todo nuestro corazón. Yo, oh, let us what, how many of us really are, are serving the Lord with all our hearts? Mis amados hermanos, Jesús quiere revelarse a nosotros en el día de hoy. Yes, brethren, the Lord wants to reveal himself to us this day. A estos discípulos, él mostró interés and to these disciples, he demonstrated how interested he is in them. Se interiorizó de lo 
que hablaban en el yeah, camino. Yes, they, they internalized what they spoke in the, along the way. Jesús socializó con ellos y se interesó en el tema de la conversación. Jesus socialized with them and he became enmeshed, interested in the conversation they were having. Y se interesó en su vida particular. And he, he focused on their individual lives. Porque preguntaba, ¿y por qué están tristes? Because he asked them, why, why are you sad? Jesús se interesó con el corazón de estos hombres. The Lord was interested in the hearts of these disciples. Los escuchó atentamente. He listened to them intentively. Jesús intentamente quiso pasar tiempo con ellos. He intended to. He, he made the effort to spend time with them. Hubo intencionalidad de Jesús. There was intentionality in Jesus. Caminar lleva tiempo. It takes time to walk. Jesús desea conocer hoy tus necesidades. The Lord wants to know your needs. Caminar al lado de una persona y mostrar el interés a su vida fue lo que hizo Jesús con esos discípulos. To walk beside someone and to share life with someone, that's what Jesus did. Y los impactó con su presencia. And he impacted them with his presence. La respuesta fue llena de amor. That, that answer was full of love. Tan llena de amor. Such great love. Que ellos invitaron a Jesús. They invited Jesus. Quédate con nosotros. Would you stay with us? Su presencia era el primordial. The, his presence was, was the chief thing. Partió el pan. He broke that bread. Y en el versículo 32. And in verse 32. Jesús hizo arder sus corazones. He opened their hearts. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This la palabra the word que al tomar el pan, it, 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 as he took the bread, lo pone el alto, he, he lifted it up, los ojos de los discípulos fueron abiertos, the eyes of the disciples are open. Arde en tu corazón cuando escuchas la palabra de Dios o cuando la leer does the word of God burn in your heart when you hear it when you read it que sucede cuando tú decides cambiar tu historia what happens when you decide to change your que story que sucede cuando Jesús entra en tu casa what happens when you let Jesus into your house que sucede cuando Él bendice tu pan y tu generación what happens when He you allow him to bless your bread and your situation. Él te devuelve la visión. He restores your sight. La llama del Espíritu Santo se enciende otra vez en ti. The glow of the Holy Spirit burns bright yet again in you. Y cuando ves realmente que es el Señor. And when you see again that this is really Jesus. Ya no puedes parar. Oh, you can't stop ya there. Ya no puedes descansar. You can't rest there. Tú vas corriendo de regreso a su presencia. No, you keep, you, you go running back to his presence. Y regresas a Jerusalén de tu existencia. And you return to the Jerusalem of your existence. Porque quiere que otros escuchen que estuviste con Jesús. Because he, you want others to know that you were with the risen Jesus. Y dice la palabra que en esta misma hora salieron corriendo. Este no es mi lugar. Amen. At that very hour, the word says, they got up off the table and they ran back to Jerusalem. Emmaus is not where I'm supposed to be. Emmaus no me pertenece. Emmaus is not where I should be. Correré a los pies de Jesús. I shall run to the feet of Jesus. Y ese regreso a Jerusalén. And that return to Jerusalem significa servicio, familia, ministerio y trabajo para el Señor. Means service, service with the Lord, work with the Lord, ministry with the Lord. Regresar es un cambio de actitud. To return to Jerusalem is a change of your attitude. 
Meu querido irmão, meu querido amigo. My brethren, my beloved brothers and sisters. Talvez em tua vida já has escutado esse tema antes. Perhaps you've heard this talk before, this theme before. Ou que sabes é a primeira vez que lo hace. Or maybe this is the first time you hear a sermon on this passage. Pero quiero invitarte hoy a que medite en el camino que estés siguiendo. But we invite you to meditate in the walk ya that Jesus you are on. Te ha recordado lo que hizo en la cruz, que morreu y resucitó. Now Jesus has already reminded you of what he's done in the cross. He died and is risen. Reconoce su poder y sus milagros. You recognize his power and his miracles. Reconoce el poder de su resurrección. You recognize the power of his resurrection. Y el mismo poder que resucitó Jesús de entre los muertos. And the same power that rose Jesus from the dead. Está aquí en esta mañana. Is here this morning. El mismo poder que levantó a Jesús. The same power that rose Jesus from the dead. Está en ti en esta mañana. Is in you this morning. Hallelujah. Regresa a sus brazos. Return to his arms. Porque Cristo está vivo. Because Jesus is alive. Solo él tiene el poder. Tiene la palabra de vida eterna. Only his word has the powers of eternal life. Me encanta pensar de que ni la muerte pudo contenerlo. I love thinking that not even death could hold him back. Porque él es, es, es el autor y sustentador de toda forma de vida. Because he's the author and the sustainer of every form of life. Y quiere revelarse hoy a tu vida. And he wants to reveal himself to your life. Y lo único que debe hacer. And the only thing that you need to do. Es arrepentirte. Is to repent. Vivendo ya alejado de tu vida anterior y venir con corazón humilde. Amen. To step away from your old manner of living and come with an open heart. Venga Jesús. Come, come to Jesus. Para que Él sea el Señor y Salvador de tu vida. So that He may be the Lord and the Savior of your life. Creyendo con fe. Believing with faith. Que Él fue a la cruz a ocupar tu lugar. That he went to the cross to take your place. Y morir la cruz. And he died on the cross. E cuando tú deberías hacerlo. When it should have been you. Y creyendo. And además, believing on top of that. Que la muerte no pudo con él. That death itself could not hold him back. Quizás. Haya escuchado mucho sobre Jesús. Maybe you've heard a lot about Jesus. Pero aún no lo conoce de verdad. But maybe you've not gotten to know him. Quiero invitarte hoy a que abra la puerta de tu corazón. We invite you to open the door of your heart. Y permita que ese Jesús que camina contigo en la tristeza. And we and we and permit this Jesus to walk with you in your sadness. Entra en tu vida. May He also enter your life. Para que puedas conocerlo. So that you may get to know Him. Y como dijo Job en el capítulo 42, versículo 5, de oídas te había oído, mas ahora mis ojos te veen. And as Job wrote or declared at the conclusion of his book, I had heard about you, but now my eyes see you. Hallelujah. Quizás estés viviendo un momento de tribulación, Maybe. de confusión, de angustia y que tales cosas debilitan tu fe. Maybe you're walking through situations of, of pain and anguish and these things weaken your faith. Y por eso has pensado en volver a Emmaus. And maybe you've, you've given some thought to going back to Emmaus. Hoy el Señor te recuerda. The day the Lord reminds you. Que solamente en su palabra puedes encontrar la respuesta para tu situación. Only in his word can you find the solution to his Solo en your pain. Cristo Only in Jesus. puedes encontrar la satisfacción que tu alma tanto anhela. The, this, only in Jesus could you find the satisfaction that your soul so desires. Quizás 
Hay una, dos, tres personas aquí. Maybe there's maybe two, three people here. Que dice, yo estoy cansado de andar sin Jesús. I am tired of walking without Jesus. Y hoy quiero correr a sus brazos. And I want to run to his arms. Y entregar mi vida completamente a él. And deliver myself, surrender myself completely to him. Si hay una persona aquí. If there's one person here. Quiero invitarte. I want to invite you. A que pares ahora y venga aquí adelante y quiero orar por ti. To come forward, uh, come, come to the altar because we want to pray for you. Se nunca entregaste tu vida a Jesús. If you've never delivered, if you've never surrendered your life to Jesus. Y sientes que hoy el Jesús resucitado te invita a una relación con él. And you believe that today is the day that the resurrected Jesus is inviting you to a relationship with him. Porque él está vivo. Because he is alive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Si hay una persona aquí, párese ahora y venga aquí adelante. And if there's someone here who, uh, who, who wants to surrender their life to the Lord for the first time, just stand now and come forward. Vamos a cantar una canción. We're going to sing a hymn. Y si sientes el deseo de pararte y venir aquí adelante. And if you feel you, the desire to stand and come forward. Yo no quiero salir de aquí sin darte I, I, I don't want to leave this place without giving you that opportunity. Uncomfortably in your heart and uncomfortably in your mind. We would love nothing more than this powerful word that Pastor Mick just delivered to inspire what I call a divine discomfort. If Jesus loves you, and we know he does, he doesn't want you to leave here anything less than walking with him and living a life, a life open to his, the riches of his glory. We're going to transition to our fellowship time. Maybe that's your walk to a mouse. The four stories that it takes us, the four flights up to the fourth floor. Maybe that's your walk. I'd love nothing more. We would love nothing more and to speak life into you and to speak Jesus with you. We love you.
May the risen Jesus bless you. May the risen Jesus lift his face upon you and have mercy on you. May the risen Jesus shed the light of his face upon you and give you his peace.